Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the trap dog. Giving them a Dress like a million bucks, bucks, Got things in its cups. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands Listening to the voice, a uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. I was talking with my wife, and she said something her father always used to tell her just because you can do something, don't mean you should do it. I can't tell you how many times I've had to learn that in my life. You know, just because you can do something does not necessarily mean you should do it. I could tell people off oftentimes. But it don't mean I should do it. I could go here and set the record straight a lot of times, but it don't mean I should do it. Well, I've learned a lot in that lesson, folks. And because I have a relationship with my creator, what it's done is it's allowed me to learn even more how to stay still on a lot of issues that's troubling me. I've learned it the hard way. I do want you to understand that that sometimes it's better to be still. Sometimes it's better to just let God handle a situation. Now, and I know it's hard to say because we think as people, but if I do this, I would feel better. If I do this, now they'll feel how I feel. See, but that's not always the best way, though, I've found in my life. Sometimes you got to, like old people used to say, you got to let go and let God. I'm going to tell you something, man. I learned a lot from my mother being a Sunday school teacher. But, you know, at the same time, when she was when I was young, I thought she was just an old, old person just talking to me. I didn't get it. You know how your parents used to talk to you and you didn't get it. And they used to always say, well, wait till you have your own kids. You will get it then. And sure enough, you got it then. Well, I'm the same way. I'm no different. You know, I don't have no different life than you. You know, I have no different upbringing than you. I don't have no different ways that I can live and you can't. You know, I got to live by the same laws of the land that you got to live by. I got to obey the principles of success. If I want to be successful, I got to bam. And, you know, and if I want to go to heaven, I got to do what God tell me to do as many times as I can. Now, you ain't going to get it all right, but he understand that. And I just get on with the best I can. But so many times, man, we get stuck right there, man. Worrying about, you know, how, how it's going to come across and, and what I'm, you know, you know, kind of going around here because I'm trying to find a way to tell you this, that you won't get twisted. The bottom line, you got to let go and let God. You have to allow him to do it his way. See, I thought myself to a certain point, but to go further, I had to let God have it. I found out I wasn't all that good a driver. I found out I wasn't all that good of a explorer with a map. So I had to let go. I had to let God. And you got to understand that God works in mysterious ways. How often had I thought it was over for me 
But what God was doing was he was teaching me a lesson. He was showing me something that I needed to know. He was allowing me to experience some things, but he didn't let me go under. You know how they say God will never put more on you than you can bear? He won't let you go under. You know, it's like the scripture that Bishop Omer taught me when I was going through that traumatic thing on the Internet, man. It was really, really, man, trying to destroy what I had worked for and my family and this new life that God had presented me. And the devil is busy. The devil don't like to see you happy. So here he comes. He puts you under attack. And here comes the Internet and everything. And my kids are suffering. But, you know, here, here comes God, though. See, God don't put more on you than you can bear. And Bishop Omer sent me a scripture. He sent me Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. And in that scripture, it says to the effect that you can walk through the waters, the rivers, and the water won't overcome you. But then it said you can walk through the fire and you will not get burned, nor will kindling set upon your clothing. I learned something very valuable that day. See, God sent me through something, but he was showing me something, too. Now, he didn't do it. God didn't bring that calamity into my life because in Isaiah 54, 17, it says clearly that if anyone comes against you, it will not be my doing. Now, this is what he promised you when people come for you, though. See, and this is what I learned. That's why I have no fear of the people coming anymore, because I learned that. But God had to send me through a traumatic experience in order for me to learn that. You can't have a testimony without a test. You know what I'm saying? You can't learn nothing without a lesson. So what he did was he allowed that Internet thing come across into my life. But he taught me something. And Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 was, and you can walk through the fire and not get burned, nor will kindling set upon your clothing. So what that said to me was, even though you're trying to do me and there's fire all around me, I won't burn. But when it's over, kindling won't set upon your clothing. What that showed me was. Not only would I walk through the fire and not get burned, but there would be no signs that I was ever in the fire. There's no signs of it. But now hold up, though. Now here go the part, though, that I had to learn. Even though you can walk through the fire, y'all, and even though you're being flames and scorching all around you, if you trust him, he ain't going to let you burn. But now hear what he did not say, though. He did not say that it was not going to be uncomfortably hot wickedly hot in there. He ain't say that. He just said you won't burn. And when it's over, it won't be no signs that you was in the fire. See, what happened to me was after they tried to destroy me, let me show you what God did for me. Not only did they not accomplish what they set out to do, but when they was through with me, though, when they was through throwing the gas and throwing the fire and throwing the hate and writing it and lying and creating all these names for themselves so it could look like more people was hating when they got through with all that man look what he did to me look what he did for me because he taught me something that day and i'm sharing it with you because god will do the same thing for you but you got to trust him though you got to get in there and you got to let him do it you got to let him handle it so just like pop bridge is taught my wife Marjorie, just because you can do something don't mean you ought to do something yeah you could go down there and straighten them out but should you though yeah, you can go down there and tell them all. Yeah, you can go down and stand up and make sure they know it's your voice that they hear it. And you can get in their face and make a scene. But should you, though, or should you let go and let God? So before we run all out in the streets and somebody go out there and do something crazy, let's hold tight. Now, I'm not saying don't go out there, but you got to watch who you go out there with. But you can go down there with peace in your heart. Somebody decide, I'm going to throw a brick through here and bust a window. Hold up, partner. Hold up, that ain't what we're down here doing. So, see, sometimes, man, you got to let go and you got to let God. You got to let God have a situation sometime. And you get in there and do the things that he tell you to do. See, Bishop Oman had taught me a lot. He had another book out and he said, uh, you know, Knowing God's Voice or something like that. I'm not sure of the title. But I never really knew the definition of how do you know it's God's voice talking to you? Well, he clearly made a statement. God's voice has no sin in it. Whenever you talk about, I'm going to go, I'm going to show him, I'm going to get him back. If it's sin in it, God ain't in it. See, that's you now. God's voice has no sin in it. So when you say, God told me, be careful, because God ain't never told you to go do nothing wrong. That ain't what he told you. And I learned that too. It's a lot. So I'm just sharing today. I hope it helps somebody today get through a difficult time because the show has helped me.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Let me clear my throat. Hey, I've never done that before. I don't know where that came from. I was just, I was just on one. I, there ain't a lot of hip hop stuff that's in my heart, but that right there. Yeah. Hey, who is that? DJ, DJ Cool. cool. <laughs> Anyway, that's how I felt like <laughs> nah. doing it. You still on. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good that's morning. a jam, though. We I, I even had to ask y'all who it was. I'm the <laughs> last person. Well, I must admit, though, uh, first of all, good morning. Uh, giving honor to God. Uh, uh, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because know this. He the only one making days, y'all. Quit tripping. He the only mm-hmm. one. And he the only one can wake you up to get in the day. So I'm grateful for all that. Now, with that said, I'm not a, I'm not a hip hop head at all, but I will say I've done masterfully, wonderfully well on the hip hop pop quiz that has been thrown out to me on the show. Yeah, I've gotten have. so many answers oh, right you have. to the surprise and dismay of my crew. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, today <laughs> is a new day. Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., and the legend that is nephew Tommy. Junior, yeah, yeah, what's uh, on your mind today, brother? Okay, uh, let me, you know, they say you can find out a lot about how a person feels about the people he work with. So let's just ask you this question. Uh, say, uh-huh. you get into a, say you get into a fight. Uh-huh. Okay, what do you see your crew doing if you get into a fight? With a group of people. Well, first How do you see it playing? Be right there. <laughs> I'm scrapped. It's all here. It's hands pulling hands down. I don't see it. I don't see it playing by me before, so I'm not even yeah. concerned about that. This one yeah. right here. Yeah. Stay on ready set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Junior, I expect you to gather yourself, but it depends on where to fight at. Like if the fight outside in the cold, you probably gonna have to go back in and get your. <laughs> You never talk about fighting. That's the only fighting. thing. Yeah. You know, because you be having crisis and stuff. Okay. Uh, okay. Shirley is going to tell us how ghetto and ignorant it is to fight. <laughs> Carla going to take her earrings off. About. Let alone. Carla going to take her earrings <laughs> off in, in case some girl jump in it. That's the yeah. only way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She going to take yeah. her earrings off in case a girl jump in it. Mississippi yeah. Monica going to tell it. She just gonna tell you. <laughs> she gonna be she on gonna the news with the recap. She gonna, she gonna put it, it on post. her IG. <laughs> yeah, she gonna get yeah, some views. She gonna post it. Uh, yeah. We got our ass well. So, so that's what's gonna happen if I see something popping off on this morning show. And yeah. notice I did that without hesitation. No, no hesitation at all. <laughs> no, you you said that. Monica's posted it. Without right now. Doubt. <laughs> but but gonna be but she gonna be making that expression, you know them selfies she do where she put herself in it. Oh not that she, not that she, she in it though, though recording yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. She record. yeah. Why y'all in the back why in the background fighting? That's all and good. Shirley, oh my God, stop. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah. Carla got her earrings oh, in her hand just circling them, waiting on it. Well, it depends on how big the girl is, though. <laughs> you know your limit. <laughs> yeah, let me size yeah. her up. <laughs> we are not going to be Junior, fighting. I need you to hair up and go inside and get, get that, that coat. jacket. Coming up in 32 <laughs> yeah. minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Tis the month of St. Patty's Day, and did you know the odds of finding a lucky four-leaf clover are 1 in 10,000? I'd say that's pretty difficult. Fortunately, if you're hiring, you don't need luck to find top talent for your team. You need ZipRecruiter. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology starts showing you qualified candidates for it. Aren't you just a wee bit curious to see how ZipRecruiter Recruiter can help you. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash strawberry to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? <laughs> well, uh, this right here is you gave wrong directions to my sister's grave. You gave wrong directions to my sister's grave. If you ever been to a graveyard, you know, they don't have streets. They just got little pathways, you know. You mm-hmm. just turn at this path and then 
when you see this tree and then when you see this tombstone and then make a right at that, you know, it's, it's, it, it can get confusing sometimes. You gave wrong directions mm-hmm. to my sister's grave. All right. All right. Now, cat dog, if you could, you gave wrong directions at my sister's grave. Let's go. Hello. Thank you for calling. Cemetery, how may I help you? Did, I, my name is Frederick Stammer. Did that, uh, Tamara Mc... Let me see if she's in the office. One moment, please. Thank you. It just don't, it don't make sense. For us all to go out there like we did, and then they're running into these type of problems. That Hello? Had. Hello? Hello? Listen, my name is Frederick Stemmons. Okay. Now, my sister's system is buried out there. Okay. And we come out there last week on Monday to come out there and pray over the the, uh, the space where she is. Now, you is the one that told us that it was a few spaces away from the mausoleum. Now, we got out there and prayed over my sister Francis's bearer and found out that we was in the wrong space. And they say you was the one that told it to us. Sir, I don't even know what you're talking about. The Jew is the one that told us that my sister Francis... I don't give out spaces. I'm in the administrative office. I don't know where you work. All I know is you was the one that told us this. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You was the one that my grandbaby said that she talked to the woman named Tamara. And you had us out there standing over some white man's body and it wasn't Sir, right. I'm not a counselor, so I can't tell you where a space is. So... Your granddaughter lied to you. Ain't nobody lied to me. Like you had us out there in the wrong space. I couldn't have had you in the wrong space because I don't even know the cemetery. You know what? I'm going to send my grandbaby up there to talk to you. Okay. I'll be here till 5. You're very mischievous. You know that? I'll be here till 5 o'clock. You, you have a good day. No, you don't you hang up this phone on me. You have a good day. No, I'm not going to have a good day. You had me praying over my sister Francis' body and it was the wrong one. And we're sitting there praying over this white man's body. Get out, get in, get out. It wasn't right. Hello? I'm listening to you. You don't have an apology or nothing. Because I know I didn't tell your granddaughter where a space was. Then what did you tell her? I don't even know who your granddaughter is. What you mean? You, the Simmons family. We were not there. I don't much. know who the Simmons family is. It's guys. not Simmons. It's Stimmons. Stimmons. I don't know a Simmons family. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not a counselor. I don't even deal with families. Here's what I need you to do. Can you go out there and pray over my sister body? I don't know where your sister is buried. It's supposed to have been six spaces away from the mausoleum. I don't... Are there any spaces? Yeah. Where is it? Where is it at? Section 2. Section 2? We was in Section 2, but it was some white man. We was... That, that, it, it wasn't my sister Francis. Okay, I don't even know who your sister Francis is. I do not even know where Section 2 is. Whoever came into the cemetery and said that they spoke to me, they probably did speak to me, and I probably got the information from a counselor, but I never showed them exactly where the spot was. So if they were out there praying over your sister and they were in the wrong spot, that's not my problem. They're praying over some white man. And That's not my problem, sir. If you gave the wrong, the wrong spot. If you gave the wrong information, it is just by let me explain I to you. I don't give the wrong information. Tamara, I told them yes, she's in section two, but me, I did not physically go out there and point to the spot to tell them to pray over that spot. Let me explain what I'm trying to to, to stop from happening. If my people come up there, it's gonna be some more bodies getting buried, and I don't want nobody to get okay, hurt. Okay, I mean your family can come up here. It's not going to be no more bodies being buried. What they can do is come up here and write, and we can conversate about this. But it's not going to be an uproar up here. I want you to go out there and you pray over Francis' body. I'm not going out to pray over nobody's body. You it's ain't not, got, it's not you my ain't. family member. I didn't tell them the wrong information. Do they you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? I dearly do. Then you ought to have some sympathy. I want you to bow your head right now. No, I'm going to um, end this conversation Gracious because God, I have all the work to do. Now, if they in want the to come in friend. and talk to me, I will be here until 5 o'clock. Can I say one more thing before you go? You can say one more thing and I'm ending the call. Okay. This nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Tamika set you up, baby. And-
and you just got it, baby, from nephew Tommy. <laughs> Boy, you was standing your ground. You like, oh, no, this guy just went and prayed over the wrong body. That don't mean nothing. I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> All right, check it out. You got to tell me one thing. What's the baddest radio show in the land? See, <laughs> See, that's the kind of stupidity that's not praised on a regular basis. You guys don't give it up for that you know to, to think that stupid and be that stupid and, and 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 not get any praise and worship for it that's the part that bothers me is that you don't you don't see the well, genius well well we it. see it every day but but it, but it's but, know, but see that's the problem that occasionally tunes in i i get that you know. I, but I, if you hang with a genius every day you don't really get to understand no, no. how much of a genius he is no, and no. that's the problem that bothers. Listen, to listen to me listen to me those two words do not belong in the same sentence. What? Stupid and genius? There are no stupid geniuses. Hello. What? Hello. What? <laughs> what? Hello. All right. No stupid you don't. Uh, now you can say. Uh, see, maybe you're using the wrong G. Maybe you're looking for genetic. <laughs> Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with our Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, in the building right after this. I'm a stupid genius. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, fired CNN host Don Lemon is owed $24 plus million dollars by CNN for the remainder of his contract. Yay for Don. Uh, yes. <laughs> and legendary Flint, Michigan councilman Eric Mays is gone, but he will never be forgotten. Flashy Bishop Lamar Whitehead's federal trial has started in New York, and that's all coming up. We'll talk about it at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Jenna in Douglasville says, My husband gives his team a small bonus at the end of the year, and he orders lunch on birthdays. I love that about him. What I don't understand is him giving boxes of candy to the ladies in the office on Valentine's Day. Is that appropriate? Well, if he gives them to all of them. You know, it's just, you know, look, when you were kids, y'all passed out Valentine's Day cards. If you give all the ladies in the office a Valentine's card, he'd give everybody bonuses. He'd give everybody, you know. <sighs> problem is, if they, it's the same box you get, that's mm. going to be the problem. You know. Okay, good point. You're going to get that You gonna get that same Whitman's box of chocolates. <laughs> so he didn't just bought 11 of them. You got Whitman. one. <laughs> he took 10 Whitman. and knocked it off. <laughs> If you get the same thing that the workers get, that's what your problem is. I don't think that's a real problem on Valentine's Day. As long as that, if he buy it for one, yeah, yeah. one employee, yeah, specifically, yeah. 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 yeah, get your rate off. But if he buying it for all the ladies, you know, yeah. he just and you say you love that about him, but see, yeah. you want to you want to pick and choose the stuff you love about he him. He's a giver. I don't think he's doing. I don't think he's up to nothing. Okay. Uh, but right, see you Can I ask you something? Huh? Are you giving out bonuses yeah. on the Steve Harvey Morning Show? Did you think about what that like? Mm -hmm. What that you man missed doing? that, Junior. You wasn't with us when that happened. You missed that. That ain't gonna ever happen again. <laughs> again. He did. Yeah. One, one, he did one time. again. <laughs> oh yeah. But Junior, but when it happened, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Now, he did that. Yeah. Now he did yeah. that. He did that. I he ain't forgot that day. On. What? <laughs> You wasn't Woo! here for that. And yeah, you, I wasn't you, you here for that. that. No. We all teared up. <laughs> now, I got one coming. Okay. I got oh. one more coming for you. Yes! Oh, you do? Mm. Okay. You know. What? No, man. I'll wait. Stay present. Okay. <laughs> I'll wait. You better get your you, work, work, boy. Don't don't get sick. Yeah, stay yeah. up. Stay up. <laughs> Hello. Take your vitamins. Stay hydrated. <laughs> I'm I'm like I'm like the winning raffle ticket in Vegas. You must be present to claim your prize. <laughs> <laughs> you out sick with a crisis. <laughs> Okay. Then our greedy behinds, we'd be like, he ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's split right. that. Right. <laughs> Moving oh, on to Nia and Tempe. Nia writes, my 30th birthday is in June, and an older guy that's interested in me has offered me a trip and said I could take my best friend with me. My mom says it sounds too good to be true, and I should politely decline. Is she jealous because he is her age? Wow. Mm. 
Well, mm. it's not that she's jealous. She's issuing you a fair warning. Understand this about us. We don't do nothing without a reason. You mean men? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, the guy that was giving out uh, everybody bonuses and gifts and yeah. the, uh, Valentine's yeah. Day candy. It's for a reason because he keeping the morale up in his company mm -hmm. and he going he gonna to make a big, it's going to be a return on investment. This so older guy is giving you a trip and says you can take anybody you want to. How great of a gesture that is to let you know, hey, look, he's he's giving you something and making you think there's no strings attached. That he's just a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Her mama's right. All right. But, but her, mom, yeah, yeah, her, mom's her mom's right. right. Well, you know, I'm yeah, real is jealous. pretty low. Why would I'm you a real is really low. Your mom ain't jealous. She just schooling you. She putting yes. you on game. Really. Yes. All right, moving on to Damon damn trip, in Peoria. Damon says, my girlfriend is a bartender and she's flirty with her customers. I know it's part of her job, but when men flirt back, she won't say she has a man. I told her it bothers me and she told me to stop coming to her job. Am I overreacting to her behavior? <laughs> well, no, you're not overreacting. It's one, one of them fish gonna bite. You keep flirting, you keep playing. You know, temptation real. You, if if you keep playing with the fire, you're going to mess around and get burned. Period. Keep flirting with these men. She done told you don't come down there. It's her job. Why is it her job to flirt? You sell the liquor. Pour the drinks. She's trying to get tips. <laughs> trying to get a bigger tip. That's a stripper's you job. like her boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like her boyfriend. I know, but that's like a stripper's a... job. <laughs> what? Bartenders That's a stripper's job. Go down there, entertaining the customers and all that to get tips. Cool. No problem. You could be cordial, but if you flirting. Mm -hmm. But look, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to last. Mm -hmm. Her fix for him is don't come down here. Because <laughs> this is what that's I her do. fix for him. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not finna change nothing. I'm getting these tips. Look, you seen that tip job? Yeah, <laughs> secure in the bag. Heck, it ain't a coin in there. <laughs> right. And right. dudes, when they tip in 20s and 50s, they like to let you see them put it in there. Go oh, ahead. you have to. You have to. That's different from a one or a five. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm not you gonna, gonna see me put this 20 You don't know it's me. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So he just, her I don't give a damn if you playing the piano down at the at, at the restaurant. I give you a hundred, you gonna know it's me. I ain't finna throw it in the case. <laughs> so her boyfriend is not overreacting. He's just he's jealous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's jealous. He's insecure. But she's yep. giving him right to be, and then her response is, "Don't come down." Don't come down. Here. <laughs> Which means it. I'm not gonna it's stop. Home, man. <laughs> it's so. Let me do me. All right, last yeah. one, Steve. This is from uh, Sammy in West Memphis. Sammy says, um, I'm named after my dad, and he's been a womanizer all his life. I just found out he has four other kids and another daughter named Samantha. He keeps trying to get me to meet my siblings. Am I wrong for not caring about them at all? It's two Samantha. Well... I mean, these your siblings, whether you acknowledge them or not. They're your half-brothers and half-sisters. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, you mad at your daddy. You can be mad, but that them, them kids didn't ask to be here. They are byproduct of two people that got together, and they here. Now, you don't want to meet them because it reminds you that your dad is a womanizer. But he's also a dad. And he just trying to put everybody together. Y'all family, y'all know each other. You know, I know it's wild, but you know, you got to be the bigger person. Mm. What what does it hurt you to meet him? You just don't want to meet him because you don't want to look at the reminder that your father was out there. But he was out there. There's nothing you can do about that. All right. Thank you, CLO. Coming up next, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, great news for Don Lemon after being fired from CNN last year. Uh, reportedly, CNN and Don have settled 
on a separation deal that would pay Don Lemon approximately $24.5 million, which is wow. the amount that was left on Lemon's contract at CNN when he was fired. That's three and a half years worth of salary. Get your money, Don. Get your money, Don. $24.5 million. He recently uh, announced plans to launch the Don Lemon Show podcast on the X platform. And Don promises that his podcast will allow him to be, quote, bigger, bolder, freer. And the podcast starts March 11th. Congratulations. Oh, Don, yeah. get your money. Uh, 24 million at one time. <gasps> Life changed. changed lives. Game changed. Well, that's, you, you, can, you operate different than it's spread out over three years. That's eight mm-hmm. million a year. Mm-hmm. If you get to check one time. Mm. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Come on, Don. Lemons. Everything change on car. Life change, Chunk, Chunks of money is changing. That's why I tell people, you know, if you get a little hit, you know, you get your... I know people that are not going to do it because I didn't do it when I was, you know, living at a different level. When my income tax check came, it was really gone before it came. Mm. Oh, definitely. Mm. Yeah, my income tax check was gone before it got there. The day after it got there, that's pretty much how they made the decision. <laughs> and then always a couple of things came up I wasn't looking for. God, though. Yeah. 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 My, little, my little 1500 was gone. Boy, I got through dollars one time. You couldn't even talk to me. <laughs> oh, <that's right>. oh. <laughs> my daddy said, and my and money burning a hole in your pocket, ain't it, boy? Yes, sir, daddy. Yes, sir. Daddy. I need to get out because you and mommy in here trying to tell me what to do. I, I need to get away from y'all because I don't want to do none of that. <laughs> Listen, boy, take 2000 that money and set that in that bank and act like it ain't over there. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> <laughs> that rainy what? day, baby. That rainy day. <laughs> that, what, daddy? Late to that. What did you do? Got with to it? be crazy. Put it over there and act like it don't over there. I'm, I'm gonna be wondering about. I'm gonna be thinking about that two thousand the whole time. It's over there. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't nothing in this world gonna worry me like that two thousand sitting over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna worry you. <laughs> Ooh, it never made it. It never made it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, congratulations, Don Lemon got his money. Yes. Um. And in some sad news, our condolences and our prayers are going out to the family of City Councilman Eric Mays of Flint, Michigan. Mays died over the weekend at age 65 of natural causes, stemming from an illness, according to his family. Flint's Mayor Sheldon Neely said Councilman Eric Mays' bold and courageous service made him beloved among his constituents and his strong presence will be missed at City Hall. May's oldest sister said that Mays leaves behind a legacy of Flint, a legacy in Flint for being funny, generous, and outspoken. We've all heard him. She said she will miss her brother's loud voice and laugh along with the craziness he brought to the family. I don't give a damn what you think about me at all. <laughs> Whatever you say, I don't give a damn. What you supposed to do? You're not supposed to do nothing to me. Go ahead and try it then. You're not fit to do a damn thing. I don't care. We're going to sit here right here at this table and we're going to conduct business. But you're not fit to do a damn thing to me. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna miss him for real. Sure. <laughs> was that close? Was I blue? Yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Great tribute, Tom. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, oh. Finally, uh, probably the most flashy bishop of all time had his first day in court this week. This week, uh, Bishop Lamar Whitehead's federal court trial started on Monday in New York. Almost two years ago, Whitehead was indicted of wire fraud, attempted extortion, and for making false statements to fund his opulent lifestyle. He is, of course, best known for wearing iced out jewelry and flamboyant designer suits and clothing to church and to court. Monday, he shocked reporters by wearing a conservative Navy suit to court. And uh, as he left the courthouse, he declined comments, but he laughed when a reporter asked him what designer he was wearing. (laughs) Well, you know, prison is a good good place to start a ministry. You know, (laughs) captive audience, they right there. Yeah. 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 All that flame. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> he just I'm laughed. telling you, man, you just got to look. Yeah, 
I know it seems tempting, man, but boy, you got to just, you got to walk that straight now. I'm sure glad I got on the right path because, whew, and Lord. God in the middle of it, yeah. too? Yeah. There's yeah. no way I could no. quit. Good Lord. But you could be president. <laughs> yeah, cool. but you, know, you, you you think the ratings was high when Donald Trump was president. You let me up in there. <laughs> Because I'm Not having all my him. cabinet meetings filmed in front of everybody. <laughs> Did y'all hear really? the president this morning? Well, some ah. stuff needs to be confidential, though, Mr. President, you, you know, huh? American public. Some things need to be confidential. What? Don't, you, some of your meetings, Name Mr. Anything. President. Just Tell secret. it all. What? Security. Now, we can see we're going to stop all that. This is what the Republicans said today. This is why we ain't doing it. And this, and this is what these far left ass Democrats said, and we ain't doing that either. Now, <laughs> nah. That's a part of your meeting. I'm You're gonna, I'm gonna be reincarnated. I'm, I'm gonna be Eric Mays in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> That One was more my time, dude, Tommy. man. Yeah. <laughs> As we go out. <laughs> oh, nobody give a damn about what you're saying, about what you're going to do. You're not finna do nothing. <laughs> you're up here talking about you brought up in with your, like you got wind in your jaws. You ain't, you might as well sit down and you ain't finna do nothing. At Coming all. up in 20 minutes after the hour, <laughs> President Biden joked with Seth Meyers about Taylor Swift and for, d- endorsing him this year. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. President Biden was a guest on Late Night with Seth Meyers on Monday, and Meyers asked President Biden if Taylor Swift is endorsing him in this year's presidential election. Well, the president jokingly responded that that is classified information. Seth told President Biden that 18 percent of Americans believe he's in cahoots with Taylor Swift to get reelected. Uh, and uh, Myers asked President Biden to confirm or deny that there's an active conspiracy between him and Taylor Smith. Uh, the president responded with, he had on his dark aviator glasses looking real cool. Quote, why are, uh, where are you getting this information? It is classified. But I will tell you, she did endorse me in 2020. <laughs> so here's the question. Do you think Taylor Swift's influence over her Swifties fan club could win the election for the president? Well, they yeah. win the election, but it's an influence. It could help. Get yeah. the young people out mm-hmm. to the polls. Maybe. Can't hurt, huh? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, and, and I in think 2020, the Steve Harvey showing up to vote would have a bigger impact. Myself. I like that. <laughs> yes. So too. Me too. Thank you, Me sir. too. <laughs> we need I that. I so myself. You know? mm-hmm. I like that, Steve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that thought process. We got to do stuff. Uh-huh. Right. Y'all can't sit this one out. No. No. We really we can't. Definitely. And it's really sad, the narrative that they're talking about. You know, Trump is touching blacks by releasing a sneaker because we love sneakers. Man, Are we that shallow? Are we That's that shallow? Think. They think no. we are. Well, yeah, no, I don't they think, think we're that stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously. I, I, I wish black people would be pissed off because, see, black people are emotional people. Mm-hmm. And if you mm-hmm. tick us off, we, we go to action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sneakers so we love. need action right now. We need action on this. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And quit yeah. telling me how old Biden is. Yes, he's old. Donald Trump is three years younger. Just so he's old Just too. Three. Right. Yeah. I'd rather old. had an old man in there than the wrong man in there. Ooh. I know that's right. Mm-hmm. I know that's right. Man, y'all, I just I don't understand this movement right here. I don't even know how but this is a question. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> How this is even an option for us not to vote, to sit this one out, to see. How old was right. George Washington? How old was all these other presidents? What was they? They wasn't. Because George looked old as hell to me on, on my dollar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the wig. I think it's that hair. <laughs> you think? <laughs> John Quincy. You know, Teddy Roosevelt didn't look all that young to me either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We ain't playing no games. No. Come on, y'all. No. Yeah, so register and then vote. It's up to you. It's up to us. It, it really, really is. Taylor Swift, we need you. We need you, Beyonce, whoever. <laughs> Everybody. It feels weird talking about we No one to sit this one out. Uh, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll play a game of One Has to Go right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
It is time now for One Has to Go. Okay, can I do it, though? Is it all right? Mm. Yeah, you but, can but, do but, it if but, you come on. I'm, I'm, I'm here. You ain't, Shirley, you don't run nothing. So now, <laughs> neither I, we're do you. Do one come got to go. on. All I'm, these spaces. Uh, okay. hey, neither, hey, neither do you. <laughs> it's that you don't either. <laughs> you don't either. Neither, on, neither, you n- neither do you. That sounds so Ooh, damn hard to say. God. N- neither, neither do you. <laughs> you shut up. What are you doing? Right, Come you on. ain't. Right, we doing one. Gotta go. I get to now. I get to ask the ladies. So we. I'm flipping it again, Shirley. All right. I did it last week. I'm doing it again this week. So just bear with me. All right. Last week I did with you rather. Now I'm doing one. Gotta go. So now here we go. Las Vegas, Paris. A Dubai. One got to go. Mm. For uh, us? For the ladies? Yes. Yeah, for, for the ladies. Oh, uh, one has to go. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Paris. Because uh, I've been what? three times. Yeah, because I've been. Mm-hmm. Okay. You want Vegas I'm... and Dubai. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Call Dubai. Mm. Well, I mm. said what I said. I'm cool with it. We're going to make it a little bit more interesting now. Thongs. Uh-huh. Bloomers. A bras. One gotta go. Bra. <laughs> Bloomers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. All right. All, now this gonna get up right. over your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Granny Let panties. Bloomers on right up under your breast. <laughs> Okay, take this bra off. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one gotta go. Here we go. Job to do. <laughs> one gotta go. Here, Junior Boy Spates, Tommy, or Steve. One gotta go. Oh, that's easy that's for easy. me. Tommy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Junior. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> What we know who's mm. who's staying. Why ain't nobody else staying down there? Hey, dog, hey, hey, dog, but look at both of y'all though. <laughs> Junior went, <"Dang." laughs> well, you know who, Junior. who's not going yeah. anywhere. That's right. <laughs> Bye, Junior. Uh, <laughs> ain't like I ain't know. Peace, Tommy. <laughs> Deuces. Okay. 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 That's okay. done, Tommy right. though. I know. Yeah. Bye, Tommy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. All right. Okay. I see. Come on. What you got? Ooh. All right. Uh, one got to go. Manicure. Lashes or pedicure? Uh, God. Wow. Manicure, oh, lashes, or pedicure? One got to go. I'm going to say lashes. I'm going to say lashes. That's I'm going to say man- manicure. Be. I can polish my own nails. That's what. That's what. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not say <laughs> I can polish my what own about nails. My but I'm going to keep pedicure and I'm going to keep my lashes. Yeah. So manicure. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah but she, she, and you didn't understand. She, she, she killed yeah, lashes yeah. because of her eyes. I, we already know what. Shut up. Oh, that's oh, why sure. you gone. That's why, that's why I'm keeping Junior. They ain't, they ain't long enough going. to close with no damn way. She, <laughs> she can kill lashes. She can't keep oh, dust out them big ass eyes. Well, I don't give a damn. She had a horse tail sitting up on there. <laughs> All right, one gotta go cooking, cleaning, or laundry. This is so easy. You know it's easy for me. <sighs> cooking, cooking, cleaning. Out. Oh. <laughs> out. You're cooking. Laundry. There you laundry go. Laundry all day. Laundry. That damn basket can sit over there. I wouldn't give a damn how. <laughs> you, you hear me? I'm talking about piled high. <laughs> cooking is therapeutic. I'm I don't know how you about change new that. Pots, new hey, man, stuff, when I was single, I used used. to go over to the laundry basket and get stuff out of the way. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Threw that in too early. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one more. One more. Here we go. Mm-hmm. One got to go. Denzel Washington, Idris Elba, or Mahershala Ali. <gasps> oh, God. One. Ooh. One got to go. Oh, Denzel God. Washington, Denzel Washington Idris, Ali. Idris Elba, and Mahershala Ali. God. I love you. Now, but, now uh... automatic. Steve don't know who Mahershala is, but uh-huh. I know y'all do, though. Go yeah. And I saw him in gold with a capital G on it. Bye. <laughs> he is. Right. I don't even know why you put Herschel no, Walker in there. That's a bad thing. boy. It's right not Herschel Walker. He said for Herschel Ali. And well, whatever his damn name is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mahershala. I'm going to have to say Mahershala. Yeah, Mahershala. What? He's fine. I'm going to have to. You know how I feel. This hell ain't going nowhere, though. Elf. You know. Please. I'm Our putting cases on all you. All right, coming up next, the nephew and the prank phone call for today, right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, should I tell him what his daddy showed me? Mm. We'll get into that in just a few. Find out what that's all about. It's not what you think. It is time now for the nephew in today's prank phone Hurry call. up. All right, this right here is your doors. Your doors. All right. All right. Black people pull over. This is your doors. Let's go. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Mr. Paul, please. Call Virginia Senior. Probably Senior. Okay, this is me. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Listen, my name is Mark. I'm actually calling from a uh, company called Doors. Are you at Are you at food court? Yes, correct. You guys just built that home, right? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm I, like I said. My name is Mark Stevens. I'm actually calling from a Doors. We're actually the company that uh, supplied the doors that are actually uh, throughout your house. Okay, great. Uh, what are you calling for? A follow up? Uh, no, this isn't a follow up. Actually, we've uh, got a couple glitches. We want to try and get get straightened out if we could. Uh, well, here's here's the problem, sir. The problem we're having is that the contractor that actually uh, built you all's home. Yes. Uh, has not paid for the doors. You guys have been there two and a half months, and uh, we we can't seem to get the uh, contractor to come in and pay for the doors. Okay, uh, so you tried to call them. We've tried to call them several times, and, okay. and we have not been able to what get What number uh, do you have on them? Because if you have a good number, I can give you a number, because I, I really don't have anything to do with that. In fact, how would you get my number? Well, actually, we had your number on file as, as the homeowner, and, and that's pretty much how we had you. But the problem we're facing here, sir, is we've tried to get this guy for the last couple of months, and we can't get him. So, actually, what's what's going to happen here in the next day or so is we're probably going to have to come and get all the doors. Well, hold on, wait a second. Do what? We're, we're probably going to have to come and get all the doors in your house, take them off, and bring them back here to the plant until who, we who, get. Who's going to come get all my doors? We we're going to have to get those doors until either we get a contractor. Or, you know, we get paid for the doors. Now, what could happen is you could pay for the doors. No, 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 I already paid for the doors. That's, that's, that's past tense. I've done that. Paid. You're saying paying. That means i got to double back. Well, sir, but we haven't been paid, sir, for the doors as well. No, 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 no. The contractor was paid for the doors. So that's who pays you. Okay. And, and what I'm trying to explain to you, sir, we haven't been paid at all here at Doors. Now, when oh, we paid, oh, oh, okay. Well, at Doors... They should have received a check from my contract. Okay. It, and it, what it, I'm explaining coming. to you, sir, is that that hasn't been done. I told you, since you have not been paid, you're going to come back and get my doors. Now, you said we. Now, who's all this? You and who are they going to come sir, like, like, here's the problem here. Like no, I said, no, no, there ain't no problem. We're going we're gonna to resolve this very peacefully. But who, who is we? Okay. So what's taking place here at my job is they've taken this money out of my check that hasn't been paid for the doors. Oh, yes. I can understand that, but why would they take it out of your check? You did the man hours. You did, you've done your work. Why I, don't I understand that, sir. But since the company hasn't been paid, the company is taking it out on me, and it's not going to come down on me. So either I'm going to get the doors. Well, you need to quit your job because they, they need to give you a, 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 not just give you a bonus, but give you some hourly work because bottom line is you talking about coming to get my doors. No, that's not going to happen. Either we resolve this peacefully as if you pay for it, or I come out and get the doors. And I'm not going to sit here and go back and well, forth. You, you need to go in and come get these doors. Gas up and come get these doors because you're not going to come and get I'm not going to send you no money. Okay, sir, then, then, then what we need to do is get a schedule time where I can come out and get all the oh, doors. Now I'm on your time. I'm sorry? I'm on your time now, so you got you must be paying me now since I'm on your time. What are you talking about? Because uh, well, you're talking about you gonna set up a time with me. That means I have to leave and do what I do to be meet you here to get something that don't belong to you, which is my door. Sir, you don't have to be there at all. Because oh, I'm gonna, oh, take, no, I'm I'm gonna, be I'm gonna come here. in and take the front door off, and I'm gonna keep keep moving through the house and get all the doors and get them back here to the plant. I don't think you hear yourself. Now, first and foremost, how you when you come to the front door, I'm gonna be there waiting on you as you as you. Take it off the latch. I'm going to be on your behind making sure you realize you're going to have to take this door or take this And I'm, think, I'm pretty sure that will be coming to you when you get that first door. Sir, I can't keep going back and forth with you. Let me say this to you. I'm coming to get them doors even if I got to take a whooping because I got to get my money back from the company that they done took for me because your damn contractor did not pay for the damn doors. Hey, you better hey, bring your, your tone down when you talk to me. You talk to a girl. Man, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on you. I am not going to allow you to come to my house and take these damn doors, and you ain't coming to get no money. Bottom I'm line. coming to get them doors, and I'm coming to get them today. I need every Come on now. What time are you coming? 
Because I want to be prepared when you come mess with these doors. Because I, I, I make sure, please, what, what time you coming? Don't, don't worry about when I'm coming. You'll know when I'm there when I take the first door off the hinge. Every door, we going to meet at that door. I'm going to whoop that and tell you what, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you a dollar and whoop it. Now take that check. You can make 10 75 Whooping the night. I'm going to take that whooping if that's what it takes, but I got to take these doors. I'll tell you what, so I get my I'll money. What I need you to do. Next time, get your damn money. Stop. Get a job that pays you better for this whooping. You're going to get in fed well. I'm not. No, sir, I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you about you whooping my. You got to go back and forth. That is the end. Bring your over here, take that whooping, and take it all home. I'm with you. But I'm bringing them doors, yeah. too. Every door yeah. in that I house. Bring me is enough coming with me. You should have been taller a contractor. You should have been taller a contractor. But y'all over there stealing doors from, from my damn company. Now I'm telling you what you need to be calling them. He got your money. I'm coming to get every door you got in that house. Bring me that number. I'll tell you what, you know what I'll do? I'll just wait yeah. till you go to work. Bring me the number right week, now. I'll just come in there and get them doors while your ass is gone. You, Junior? Oh, wait, wait a second. Now, I just told you, you ain't coming to get no doors. I just got to tell you this. Junior, get it from your mama. Bring it on now. Them doors. And you know what else I'm coming to do? What? I'm coming to tell you who I am. You Do you know who I am? Yeah, more so I know who you are. So you want your up here, I make sure I introduce myself. You want to come get a door with I come get these doors then. If you're that bad. That ain't, that ain't really who I am. Well, who are you? I am Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got prank phone call by your wife, Faye. Faye! That's why that's why she was bringing the damn number. Oh, you gonna get it when I get downstairs. Oh, oh brother, you got me. You know, I'm a, I'm a typical Negro. I got one of the red doors. You know when you get the red doors, you're doing something. Oh, man. Hey, man, I gotta ask you, man. Paul, what is? What is the baddest, and I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Oh, the Harvey <laughs> Show. And Cousin Tommy. I was over here just praying, man. Faye, don't bring that number in now. <laughs> but all I heard was all this moving, so I'm thinking they're they looking for it, but they down there probably on the floor getting it. Stupid enough? <laughs> you gonna get your butt killed. <laughs> Stupid enough? We ain't gonna hold it too long. Yo, doze, baby. Yo, doze. I gotta come get all these doze out your house. <laughs> That was all great. these doors. I gotta get all of them. <laughs> the doors, though. <laughs> the doors, baby. The doors. All right. Freedy Walker. The nephew is at Charlie Goodnights. Not Charlie. Charlie. I'm calling it Charlie. This weekend is Charlie. It's not Charlie. It's Charlie. Charlie Goodnights. All right. Two on Friday, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. The nephew is coming to town. Get your tickets. They on sale right now at Charlie. Good night. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, and then I'm going to take the family. Let me look at the calendar, y'all. Let me see. Take the family out. Then I'm going to come back. Matter of fact, Richmond, Virginia. That's right. That was 15, 16. Um, sold all that out. Just added a Thursday night Thank show on Lord. the 14th. Tickets on sale right now. Right now. And then laying way out in the cut is Montgomery, Alabama. And if you're all around the country. Stupid moving around the country. I don't know if y'all know it, but stupid moving around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is Stupid look at the movie. internet. It's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Junior, I never noticed that you wear your wristwatch on your right arm. Yeah, Uncle, I'm left-handed. Oh, excuse me, Sarah. You left-handed. That's usually a left-handed yeah. trait. Uh, 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 Steve's uh, left-handed, left-handed, too. And I am, I know. too. I wear mine on my You just didn't know I wore right. But I, you're I left-handed and, and use right clubs to play golf. So you're so confused. It's a damn He's I bat left-handed. I do, too. And I write right-handed. I'm confused. <laughs> He what? You play golf right hand? Yeah. Yeah, he do. Right left handed, bat left handed. Oh, yeah. It's so funny how we We're have so many left handed people in our family. on this show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, it is the strawberry letter, and the subject is Should I tell him what his daddy showed me? Mm, we'll get into that. Find out what that's all about See, Jim, right after Jim, this. You, you, you right hairline is what you is. You, you right hand. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, should I tell him what his daddy showed me. 
Dear Stephen Shirley, my husband and I met in the seventh grade, and I have loved him since then. We got married when we were 22 years old, and we have two grown children. His parents are like my parents and vice versa. His mom is staying with us for a while because my father-in-law was going through her personal things and he started following her. When she found out, she called us with a sob story and my husband sided with her. I immediately gave my father-in-law the benefit of the doubt because his wife is very dominant and she, he lets her run all over him. My husband always takes his mom's side, and he got upset with me when I asked him to hear his dad out. My father-in-law is very hurt that his son isn't uh, talking to him. He called me and asked if he could come by the house and show me something while my husband and his mom were at church. Sunday morning, he came by and had evidence on his phone that his wife was cheating on him. He had a video of her in her car straddling another man on the passenger side. The video isn't clear, but I believe it's her by the bad wig she had on. If my husband sees this, he will flip out. I'm not sure he'll be more mad at his dad for capturing the video or if he'll be disgusted that his mom betrayed his dad like that. I have no idea where his head is these days, but I I know he... He, he doesn't play about his mama. I told him that he needs to talk to his dad, but he's being stubborn. Should I tell him what his dad showed me? Would that help the situation? I don't think that's going to help the situation. The only thing that I, I think is going to help you and your situation is that you get out of it. You get out of this. I know they kind of brought you in when his mom moved into your house and his dad asked you over there. But no, you need to stay out of this. The fact that you're already in it so deep is beyond me. You are messing up your own marriage by being all up in theirs. Your husband has picked a side, like you said. That's not right either, because he should hear his dad's side. His, if anybody is going to tell him about his mom and this other man, it should be his dad. Um, your husband got mad at you for even suggesting that you talk to that you hear his that he hear his dad out. The two of you as a unit should be encouraging his mom to go back home and for them to work it out. All your father in law did was follow her and go through her things, and that's a lot I know. But he saw her cheating. He saw her straddling another man, which is crazy. I mean, some men would have done much worse than go through their things and follow their wives. Uh, this is still not your business though and it's not too late to back away from it if you were to say anything to your husband about his mom being in your home he could turn on you again and this is why you don't shouldn't want any part of this the only thing you should be doing is telling your in-laws that you love and support them you want them to work it out let them figure it out by themselves steve this is a full-blown mess right here mm -hmm. should i tell him what his daddy showed me and I was waiting on something else, so I got a little thrown for a loop of yeah. quite a, a little bit of surprise here. I was thought Daddy had showed something else, but no. Daddy was out here flashing evidence. Uh, you've known your husband since you was in the seventh grade. You've been knowing his parents, obviously, the whole time. Her parents, his parents is like your parents. Your parents like his parents. His mom is staying with y'all now because your father-in-law was going through her personal things and he started following her. And when she found out, she called us with a sob story and my husband sided with her. Now, I don't know what the mama said, but I can promise you it wasn't the truth. <laughs> so, and she know that the boy is a mama's boy. So let me call my son and get him on my side. So now she's staying with them. And then you gave the father-in-law the benefit of the doubt because his wife is very dominant and he lets her run over him. Now that I believe to be true because later on he let her run over her him again and did nothing but take a damn video. Hmm. I'll tell you what, how I feel about that in a minute. Anyway, uh, my husband always sides with his mom and he got upset when I asked him to hear his dad out. Just hear your father out. And then your father-in-law is hurt that his son ain't talking to him. <clears throat> so he called me and asked me if he could come over and show me something. While my husband and his mama were at church. This is mama boy stuff right here. Your wife ain't in church. You going to church with your mama. 
<laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. I love. I wish I could go to church with my mom again. I promise you, I do. I really, really do. <laughs> but I can't. And so I ain't mad at him for going to church with his mama, but they went to church together. Now the father, he ain't going down there because he ain't sitting up in there with this mess because he got this video. He had a video of her in her car. Car, he in there helping Ooh. pay for. Straddling another man on the passenger side. The video isn't clear, but I leave, but I believe it's her by the bad wig she had on. See, she wear bad wigs. Mm-hmm. You know that's her. She wear bad wigs. If my husband sees this, he will flip out. First of all, let me tell you this. I know the bloody old video blurry because old people don't know how to do video. They don't wipe their lids right. off. They just take the picture. <laughs> right. But how he over there taking videos? I'm going to tell you right now, this video right here, when we come back, I'm going to tell you what this video will actually be when we come back. All right. I'll tell you that. Hang on, Steve. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour today. Strawberry Letter subject, should I tell him what his daddy showed me? We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, should I tell him what his daddy showed me? Well, this lady had been with her husband a long time, been knowing the father and the mother since they was kids. Uh, the mother recently uh, moved in with him because uh, her and her father-in-law, her and her husband fell out. She called the boy up, the mama's boy, this girl's husband, told him some sad sob story, so she lived with her. Now, when a wife moved out of the house, something, something jumped off. You can believe that. Something jumped out. And... Uh, he didn't move out. See, if it was him, he usually got to get out. So something jumped off for her to have to move. But anyway, you gave the father the benefit of doubt because he's a nice guy, and you say she's dominant and she runs over him. So, uh, But the son don't want to have nothing to do with it. And your husband always takes his mom's side because he's a mama's boy. And then he got upset when you asked him to hear his father out. Now, my father-in-law is very hurt that his son isn't talking to him. He called me and asked me if he'd come by the house, show me something while my husband was at church with the mama. When he get over to the house and he had evidence on his phone that his wife was cheating on him. He had a video of her in her car. That's the car that they making payments on. Straddling another man on the passenger side. The video isn't clear, but I believe it's her by the bad wig she had on. It, who car was it? It's her. And she wear bad wigs. Now, she's straddling this dude in the car. Now, if your husband sees it, he going to flip out. Now, I'm not sure if he'll be more mad at his dad for capturing the video or if he'll be disgusted that his mom portrayed his dad like that. He gonna be, he gonna be, he gonna be really upset that his mom did this. Don't no boy wanna see his mama straddling another man. Mm-hmm. It's gonna, it, do you, I can't tell you the hurt that this boy would feel if he saw this video. Now, listen to me. The husband obviously is weak. And she is dominant over him, like you said. Because he took this video. I'm going to tell you right now. All this video is, is, if I had it, is evidence. (laughs) This would be exhibit A at the trial. Because that video, (laughs) when the police get there, they video, that car going to have yellow tape all around. Because there's no way I'm taking a picture (laughs) of my girl straddling a dude in a car I'm paying for. Right. And then I keep the video. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No. Why are you laid back in that car seat getting straddled? You going to look up and two people going to be on top of you. Yeah, we all going to be in the seat straddling each other. Mm. So now I don't even understand how this is. So I feel sorry for the father because, like you say, she dominating over him and he, he just showing this right here. Uh. I told him, 
you know, and okay, let me go back. You don't know if he'll be mad at his dad for capturing video, if he'll be disgusted that his mom portrayed his dad like that. I have no idea where his head at these days, but I do know he don't play about his mom. I told him he needs to talk to his dad, but he's being stubborn. Should I tell him what his dad showed me? Would that help the situation? Hell no, it ain't gonna help the situation. Because guess what? Now he already mad at his daddy. He gonna be mad at his daddy and his mama. And I don't know, I don't know how the hurt gonna be when you find out your mama tricking. That's a hard one to swallow. Your mama dog. So do I think you know do you should uh tell him no? And the reason that daddy showed you this because he want his son back. He don't want to lose relationship with his son. But he back here up at the church with his mama. He think his mama something that she not. Well, she's still a great mother. She probably still a great person. You know, good people do, do bad stuff all the time. All the time. Now, the reason she over at the house, and let me tell you this part, mama knows she in that video. She know that's her. Mm. That's her wig. That's her car. She know that. How does she know? Steve? She not and and she knocked that rear view mirror off. You know they got that little glue you can put it back up on there, but she knocked that rear view mirror off. Because <laughs> it's hard to straddle in that front seat once you get a little older. It's her. Once again, the video for me with nothing would be Exhibit A in the crib because yeah. it's yellow tape around this car right here. The dude in my car though, he, somebody getting ass whooped. And just cause you with my wife and in my car and think I'm lightweight right here, I'm, I'm gonna have to show you something. You disrespect me like that. Wow. Cause I'm not gonna allow it. So no, you shouldn't show it to your son. And that should be up to his father, not you. Mm -hmm. If the father wanna show him what his mama did, let that be on him. You, you can't stay out of it cause you in it. But tell your son that he need to just talk to his dad because his dad a good man. All right, Steve, uh, leave your comments on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, I um, know right now, free agency starts Monday in the NFL. And once again, this year, running backs are not at a value. There are so many running backs right now that are free agents right now because they will not get franchise tag. They don't want to be, and I don't understand. Because just look at the list of who they are. DeAndre Swift from the Philadelphia Eagles. Eighth mm -hmm. highest paid running back in the league. Can't get a contract. Austin Eckler from the Los Angeles Chargers. Tenth on the list. Won't get a contract. Tony Pollard, Cowboys. What? Zone. Yeah, tied for eighth. I can't believe Derrick Henry will not get a team already. They won't even sign back. They won't even get it. They don't want him. And it's like the value of the running backs is just dropping. It's changed. It's changed. Man, I'm going to go get Derrick Henry, wow. No, the Te Texans. The Texans. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Texans. Lord, hell no. But it used to be what a running back had value. Now they just like, hey, we, when we use you, we don't want you long term. We just going to let you play this season, and we'll think about it. Because they can go draft them another running back younger. Don't even have to pay him. But look at all the stuff a running back do on the field. And you don't want to pay for that. He do more than anybody on the field, in my opinion. Or because he got to run the ball, catch, and block. Because if you receive us, thank you, you're going to get the ball. Let this running back not block for this quarterback and see what happens. See if the ball get to come out. So now we got to figure out, is the bat, is this right or wrong, um, Tommy? Do y'all feel like this is right or wrong for them to not value running backs It like don't matter. Should? It's a business decision. Them owners that got together in a room that they got to fight these high salaries that they got to pay these quarterbacks, and everybody got to pay. And the running back has the probably the shortest lifespan of any NFL player. But well, that used to be the most valuable player on the team, beat. though, huh? Right up there with the right, quarterback. But they take such a beating. They can be valued, but now they done got together as a union. These owners and we, this all we pay in running backs, and don't y'all go out there and break the code and pay nobody mm. no twenty million a year. Don't start that because no. we ain't gonna be able to keep that up. See, no. they done got out of control with these quarterbacks. So now that's affecting everybody's money. Mm. Yeah, they need to pay them. If you take a tag, you can only get the average of the top five players at your position. 
So that means highest they could probably get about 10 million, 12, 10 to 12. But that's just the average. I'm not I mad at wrong. $10 million, though. Let, well, let's know, just be clear about that. But, and you, it's just, if you get hurt, Tommy, what you going to do then? I That's just want it. the $10 million. I don't want to be in the game. I don't want to play. <laughs> oh, you <man>. money? <laughs> just get you the I 10. I want to be right there. I want to be root your back up on. Wash your jockey straps. <laughs> <laughs> 10 million. All right, what Junior. I see what happens. Thank you. <laughs> Gave us a lot to think about right there. Coming up at the top of the hour, a woman, uh, Steve, needs some advice on dealing with an elderly relative that just loves sex. We'll get into that right after this. Mm. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Steve, this is from Rhonda in Birm- Rolanda in Birmingham. Rolanda says, this is hard for me to type because I respect my elders and I don't want my great aunt to hear this on the radio. She's been staying with me and uh, she started sneaking her 82-year-old boyfriend in at night. So I started inviting him out of the room for breakfast on Saturday mornings. They have a lot of sex and they try to keep it quiet, but I always know what they're up to. At breakfast Saturday, he kept doing something to my great aunt under the table. And at one point, her eyes rolled back. How do I handle these? These uh, old nymphomaniacs. Yeah, leave him alone. Let him go. He 82. Yeah. Let him have that. Leave him alone. Quit letting that bother you, though. That's what you <laughs> need to do. Quit letting it bother you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, real, it's hard to sneak old people in anywhere. You got old doors, extra wide. You, they got to come up and Extra around. wide? Yeah. They, they got to get their key out. They making all this noise and stuff. You got to help them up the step. Yeah, that's just too much. 80-year-old people, hard for them to tip your toe because they're shuffling. You know, that's in here. You know, then they got to stop and get some ice water out the refrigerator. Just come on in here. <laughs> come on in here, Odell, and stop all that. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think just we have time. Let them know. have sex and roll eyes in the back of their head. Just yeah. leave them alone, you know. Okay. They are 82. I don't I hope. Let them be great. I'm still Let them be. 82. Come on, Kim. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have time for another one, Steve. This is from Joanne in Gulfport. Joanne says, if my husband hasn't had sex with me at all this year, am I supposed to feel guilty about having phone sex with someone else? I even got caught, and I don't feel bad at all because it's my husband's job to please me or provide a reason why he can't. If it's a medical thing, I can understand that. I'm not going to sit here and get cheated on and be a dummy. Since he can't tell me why he's not having sex with me, am I within my marital rights to do as I please sexually? Yeah, let her have it. No, let you're not in your marital <laughs> rights. No way. Ain't, ain't no marital rights with that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> what the hell you mean are you in your marital rights? No. No more than he would be in his marital rights to go out and have phone sex with somebody. They may in the marital rights. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with y'all? Am I in my marital rights? No. No, you're not. But are you doing what you want to do? Yes, you are. So what did you ask us? What, what you want me to do? She wants him to you tell already her. Doing it. You know, Why? Y'all She's ain't even sitting down talking. Her. Work it out. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be a dummy and be cheated on. I'm having phone sex. I got caught and I don't care. Ta-da! <laughs> Divorce. There it is. Mm-hmm. That is. What, what this got divorce wrote all over it. Why are we talking? He busted you on the phone having phone sex and you don't care. Bam. Ooh. So what? Yeah, I was on here. <laughs> At, these is That's my marital rights. <laughs> How did she yeah. say, Steve, when well, she got caught? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm all up in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on this phone. <laughs> maybe maybe you need to listen in harder, learn yourself. You need to hear hustle in this here conversation. But why you... hear him, what he in here talking about, I'm in here right. You hear me? I'm in here right. <laughs> why do you think he's not telling her what Ernestine the problem is? Ernestine Jackson is in here <laughs> right. <laughs> know that. <laughs> listen to me, Wallace. What you're not <laughs> finna do. Wallace and Ernestine. Is if Clarence called me and Clarence is taking care of me, then Wallace, you ain't got nothing to say to Ernestine. You understand? <laughs> nah. Why I'll you meet you down at the bingo hall on Friday night and we can, we can talk through it right there. And bring me an extra pack of Paul Mall when you come. <laughs> 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 I'm Paul Mall. <laughs>
Yeah. And quit asking me how much I spend because I play four cards. I play four cards. That's it. I agree with you on that one. This marriage is done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he's not telling her why he's not having sex and she's doing what she wants to do, like you say. (laughs) All right. Hello? Yeah. (laughs) Wallace. Wallace and Ernestine. (laughs) Mm, Ernestine, you ready? (laughs) <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So legendary investor uh, Warren Buffett is the sixth richest man on the planet with a fortune of over $134 billion. But instead of asking Warren Buffett financial advice, uh, you might want to get marriage advice from him. Buffett is 93 years old, and he has been married for 70 years. 70 years. Perhaps one of the reasons he is so rich, because he never got divorced. How about that? Reportedly, he has said that by never having to cut his $134 billion fortune in half in a divorce, he has maintained his wealth. So, Steve, got to ask you guys, do you agree with it's cheaper to keep her? Do you agree with that mentality? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, uh, tell us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 134 billion, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you a plane, going to live your life. Go ahead, girl. Bill Gates did it. I ain't going to know nothing. Jeff Bezos did it. They both divorced. Yeah. Man, I'm going to have so many people in front of you. You ain't going to believe these people I got coming in and out this house. God. I'm not gonna care. <laughs> in and out this house, man. Do you? What? I'ma do me. Yeah. <laughs> Charlotte, have you met my wife? Uh, <laughs> but the wife. Hey, Charlotte. Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte. Uh, I like them shoes. Right. We doing See, a naked like brunch. Today. I left the remote between the cushions. Enjoy your night. <laughs> right. <laughs> Enjoy your night. Cheaper to keep her. <laughs> Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we will play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather have a permanent gold grill or would you have rather have man boob? Mm. Hi, that grill. The old grill of man. Yeah, I'm taking uh-huh. the gold grill. I'm not having no man booze. I just be little John, <laughs> little brother. That's what I be. No, nah, I can't work with that gold grill, dog. I take them booze. I, I, no, I'm gonna no. take them down. I'm gonna do something about me. Yeah, I mean, you can give me the man booze. I'm gonna give me the damn Spanx top. <laughs> but I can't have that gold grill. Dog. Got, mm. We got, we gotta get this check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather play the dozens with Mike Tyson or would you rather make 50 Cent mad and let him go off on you? Oh, I'm going to get on 50 grand. Cent nerve. I'm not fooling with Mike at all. <laughs> at all. Oh. I will slap 50 in the face. I'm not fooling with Mike at all. <laughs> Junior? 50 going oh. to be 30 Cent when I get through. I'm not fooling with Mike, though. <laughs> 30. Junior? Yeah, after the time, I just go with 50 Cent. That's 50. Not, not, That's not, 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 so you were talking about uh, uh, my mother? No. You were talking about my mother? Right, do that. <laughs> no, I'm not fooling with Mike, though. Steve. What? I, I, you know, Mike might just go hard left in the middle yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, Mike, you know, 50, I ain't worried about it. You can go on the internet here. You might make me get on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can't whoop 50 on that internet, though. He's uh, outstanding. No. Uh, no. He's what's the outstanding? He's outstanding. Yeah. Legendary. He's so damn entertaining. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Uh, would you rather have dinner at my house or would you have <laughs> rather have dinner at a hospital cafeteria? Very funny. Yeah, sure. Let me tell you something. Sure. Yeah. Down there at that cafeteria. Yeah, Ooh, in line, Eat I'd have a potatoes. let me have a large tapioca. <laughs> Give me uh some uh what some uh bowl of them hot water green beans. Uh, let me have uh ooh ooh let me have a turkey and stove top uh, with the clear gravy. I'll take clear the clear gravy. gravy. Clear? I, uh, yeah, this hospital. And why are you so ordering like, like it's a five star restaurant? The hospital. Oh uh, yeah, because it's, it because well, we know what it is at your house. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> man. And right. uh, I'll have a small, extra small bottle of water, please. 
<laughs> Let me tell you something. Unk, I'm going to eat both hospital food than anybody on this show. I'm going to tell you right now, I know how to make hospital food at least taste, you know, edible. Uh, what you need is fun. all all the pepper and salt you can find and some mm. hot sauce. It'll make anything work in there. I put it on the cake. I don't care. <laughs> the cake? <laughs> I don't like I any of you right now. Man. Uh, that's today's round of Would You Rather. We're coming back at 49 minutes after with um, closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Last break of the day on this Wednesday. Have to remind mm-hmm. you that tonight you can catch an all new episode, a brand new episode of Judge Steve at 10 9 Central. And that's uh, tonight on ABC and also streaming on Hulu. Yeah. You're back, yeah. Steve. Yeah. You're back, Judge hey, Steve. Hey, and. Um... Yeah, uh, go, wait, go, wait, hold uh, on, can, Junior. Can before I, you do that, I have an oh, announcement. Okay. I said, hold on, Junior. Why is you yelling at me? <laughs> Why are you yelling at that boy like that? <laughs> he is a hey, grown man. Mind you your this? damn business. <laughs> what are you all up like over that? here for? Look at that. You he yelling at me. Man, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, guys, I want to tell you all something that I'm involved in. Um, I got some really good news. Uh, I'm announcing uh, early access to the Steve Harvey Network. I have a new program. It's called the Steve Harvey Network. It's my motivational membership community. I got in a partnership uh, with my buddy Mark Cuban. And it's an interactive streaming uh, platform called Fireside. And so uh, you're going to... You're going to... not have to worry about all these AIs and all this on this platform. This is the real deal. Uh, it's it's all me, and I'm going to be sharing what inspires me every day. <coughs> Excuse me, what what fuels my purpose? And uh, starting on March 6th, this is what I want all my listeners to know. On March the 6th, the Steve Harvey Network is where we can connect and exchange knowledge to help us all elevate our lives. All you got to do is go to steveharveynetwork.com, steveharveynetwork.com, and I'll be having my very first fireside chat on March the 6th, March the 6th. So all the fans out there that really want to get a leg up on a couple of things, go to steveharveynetwork.com. Junior, what's on your mind? No, I can't can't believe this now. Now you got a network. Now you got Mm. a network. With Mark with, Cuban. With Mark Cuban. He, he doing something with Mark Cuban. He rich now. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you I don't really? have Mark Cuban money. And the moment I do have Mark Cuban money, you all would know when I have it. You will know. <laughs> this will come to work one day and you just won't be here. <laughs> yeah, that day. That's the day. That day. I, I'm not calling here. Ain't gonna, uh-uh. ain't gonna, ain't gonna, ain't gonna that was the out. day okay. that my uncle left. So, <laughs> <easy day. laughs> Will we be able to talk to you at all? Or is it just, you just gone? Oh, just, you, you can attempt. <laughs> yeah. 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 All y'all got my number. Feel free to dial it whenever you want. But uh, it's all the of- returning the call gonna be a while. Mm. Well, I'm just asking. Oh, you gonna take my call? You gonna take my call? I'm coming to the house. No, I ain't. I'm not going to that. We, uh, we don't mean nothing. At the gate. Huh? <laughs> Man, I'm not <laughs> worried about them white folks. You got at the gate. I'm not, I don't care. <laughs> oh, you should be worried about them white folks. Obviously, you, no. Let me tell you, you should be worried about them white folks at the gate. You need to be worried about them. Junior, Junior, what what do you need, sir? Oh yeah, I'm gonna ask you. I said, so if I can't talk, to, all the stuff we've done together. Now all of a sudden, you get a lot of money. We can't talk to you now. The neighborhood awards, sand and so Mm-mm. all the stuff we do with you now. All of a sudden, Mm-mm. every day working with you now, you we can't talk to you now. That's how this gonna go. Uh, that's, that's that's pretty much it, Junior. <laughs> In a nutshell. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Nah. So go uh-huh. on and start. You know, getting used to that now. You know. <laughs> Get yourself another mentor. <laughs> no, Tommy, no. Tommy Steele oh, gonna be on the show. Are you cutting out mentoring games? Yeah. Mentoring yeah. Wow. Yeah. Call Tommy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No. Call Tommy. Okay. Okay. So, 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 Unc, so you just, so you, you won't know my family or nothing. My wife, everybody. You just walk up because I said, you know, Unc Steve, you know, Listen, love. Okay. Your wife can always call me if 
you know, like if you're in the hospital or something. And she needs that's anything. The only reason. I, I, that's the only time know. somebody <laughs> she can reach out to you is if he's yeah. sick, yeah. if he's ill. Ow. That's yeah. the only the time. Worst. When you're in a crisis, I'll get it over to you, Joe. <laughs> but don't call you. No, 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 no. Have her call me and tell me what you need. <laughs> okay. And I. But I'm gonna tell you right, right now, though, he ain't gonna pick away. up your wife' call, though. I promise you, he's not gonna take that call. No, that's fine, Tommy. Because I don't have her number, number. sir. It's going to yeah. come up as... If it I ain't in his phone, he's not yeah. taking that call. I can't take that. Okay. Yeah. But what about what about prayer? Will you be praying for me then since you ain't talking to me? Will you always throw a prayer up for us? Will you do that? You don't pray for other people, uh, Junior. <laughs> what? Well, that's horrible to say, Tommy. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's okay. Steve no, it ain't, 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 ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. I'm going to help him out because his name going off the list today. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, you should have done it now. <laughs> Next time I talk to the Lord, you please understand your name will not be mentioned. He is out. You're on, uh, you on Mr. Tell It All. Yeah. No, he's not getting a mention this <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not. Okay. I don't, I don't do that. No. No, you don't, man. But a network, that's big. That's very big, man. But hang in there, Junior. Well, here's the deal. Man without a dream or vision should perish. Just keep dreaming, folks. And but, but activate your dreams with action. Don't just dream it. Get in to activate. All you, to activate a dream, all you got to do is start. You got action. Activates the dream. You know? You got to, one day you got to quit making it a dream and make it a goal. That's all. That's all. I just keep, I just keep making goals, man. That's all. God been good to me. So I don't, I don't like wasting blessings. Wake me up. Give me a new chance. I'm going to, I'm going to do something with mine. I invite everybody to do the same. God loves you, man. Y'all have a great day today. Talk to God. He would absolutely love to hear from you. Tell God what you're dreaming about, and then tell God to help you turn them dreams into goals and go about your business. God got great life for you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 